Hello everyone, today I'm going to be looking at these liquid pencil tubes by Derivan. There's 12 in the set and they are 10 mil each. I'm really excited to use these. I bought them a while ago and funnily enough, ever since then I keep seeing videos popping up about these because I think there was a subscription box recently that had some of these tubes and a lot of artists have been testing them out so I thought I need to get on this bandwagon and do the entire set which I bought separately. I did not buy this in a subscription box. As you can see this is an Aussie company, Australian made and owned although it is packed in China which is a big surprise there. But anyway let's get into this. I'm really excited to use these tubes so we'll open it up. Nice and easy today. Now in here what we actually have are two sets of six. So we have this side with the black labels are permanent and this side with the grey labels are rewettable and we have the same colours. I'm just going to reorganise them because they're kind of in a strange order and I think what I'm going to do is put primaries and then the greys. So one moment while I do this. <laughs> That's better, they're in more of a cohesive order. So all of these are water soluble, but I think the difference is that once these dry, they are not going to budge. Whereas these ones, if you put them say in a half pan, you would be able to re-wet them. But these ones would act like acrylic, so once they're dry, then you're not going to be able to re-wet them again. And that's what I'm thinking these are when they say permanent. So what I'm going to do, I did do a small swatch of these when I first bought the box and I'll probably link that video up here or it'll be somewhere and you can see the art haul that I got them in. I did do a swatching but I only did the rewettable side so today I'm going to do both and I've already made up a bit of a swatch chart here. I'm going through my hot press watercolour paper by Fabriano. I have so much of it at the moment, so you'll see quite a few videos happening either just recently or in the future where I'm trying to use up some of my large sheets and they're just nice and easy to cut down. I tend to try and use the offcuts for my swatching. What I'm going to do is just quickly swatch these out and then we'll compare them to see if these ones really do not move and whether these ones do lift. while they've dried. I'm not fully convinced by them yet. I notice that when I'm using just a really cheap brush they do streak quite badly and this could well be because of this brush and also this is hot press paper. Hot press paper does act differently to cold press and it is more prone to streaking so I'm going to be doing an actual painting with these because this swatch sheet is just not really going to indicate how they're going to work properly. I am going to spend a lot more time focusing on precision in my painting rather than the slapdash swatch sheet that I did. But it's interesting to see that they are quite different. The red especially, this one is far more red than this one which is almost graphite colour. The blue, I don't know if I used more here or if it's just darker than this one. The yellow is quite similar but this feels a bit more delicate. The sepia seems lighter over here and the greys, I mean these two are lighter than these two so it could well be just my own human error or it could be that these are just a bit more darker or heavily pigmented than these ones because all of them seem to be uniformly the same, don't they, on either side. So the last thing I'm just going to try really quickly, let's try the blue here. Yeah. Uh, it does pick it up a little bit, but it seems to be the actual graphite within the solution that it's picking up slightly. Otherwise, it does seem to be pretty permanent. 
Although I did manage to lift a little, I think. Let's try this side. I might try the yellow for this one. Oh yeah, can you see how quickly that re-wets? So, if you're using these to layer, this side is going to be a bit of a problem because as soon as you put another layer on top of your first layer, you're probably going to lift it. So what I think I'm going to do in my drawing and painting is start with the permanent side and this will be my base. And then I will add this on top as the higher layers so then I'm not re-wetting this layer this should stay nice and permanent as much as possible and then we can layer on top and add that value that is so important in any painting oh my goodness I'm a little bit nervous about this because these do not behave like watercolors they have the graphite in them and graphite is a natural lubricant so it kind of slides across itself and I noticed it also with the graphite tint pencils and you can check out that video if you like that they were also lifting considerably and it's the same concept that the graphite just really moves across the paper and I'm hoping that this side is going to help keep that pigment in. I'm just going to show you some of my drawing process now and then we'll get into the painting. Here is my reference image for today. I found this off Pixabay and I'm going to link it in the description below along with the person who created this amazing image. I thought this would be really cool to do. It's a really neat monochromatic image but I can maybe use some of the different tones in this painting. and. I'm really also trying to improve my figure drawing so I really wanted to add that in. I started by ruling out a bit of a grid just so that I can then make the picture larger. I drew all of this entirely freehand. I did not trace any of it. Sometimes I do trace the outline of a photo. Usually when I'm in a bit of a rush and, and push for time I'll do that because obviously drawing something from scratch takes much longer. I'm really not very good at drawing, I'm much better at the rendering part. Rendering is the shading and colouring in. But I am also trying really hard to improve my drawing skills, especially with drawing people, because they're so hard. And hands in particular are an absolute nightmare. But I just keep trying and I am getting better slowly. As we can see that bottom hand is not that great though, but the top hand came out okay, thankfully. Another reason why I often do a drawing in advance and then just film the colouring and the final part of it is because it is quite hard knowing that there's people watching me drawing and making all of my mistakes and you can see how many times I've had to rub bits and pieces out there because I just didn't have the proportions right and it's like having someone watching you you know it's it's really disconcerting but I also really want to share the more difficult side of being an artist sometimes and that is doing that first draft drawing which can be quite challenging and can take quite a long time and I just want to share the fact that I'm not perfect by any means nowhere near perfect in fact and I do make a lot of mistakes but that is part of the artistic process and I'm always learning I always feel like I can improve myself and that's the most important thing now I'm tracing out my sketch onto the watercolour paper here and this part is just so that I didn't need to rub anything out on the paper for the final drawing because as I've said before it's very easy to damage the cotton. Also here I'm using a water soluble graphite pencil so that it can blend in with my painting when I get to that. And here's my final outlined drawing on the watercolour paper. This is the reference image I used by comparison, so I did make this one quite a lot larger. Uh, mine's not exactly the same. I'm not very good with getting proportions quite right, but I think it's close enough. It doesn't really matter. It's a drawing. It doesn't have to be photo perfect, as I keep saying, because I think sometimes we get bogged down in things being too perfect, if you know what I mean, and that can actually make you not want to do the art or it can really be quite intimidating if you're trying to be perfect so I tend to go for the near enough is good enough school of thought and honestly what I'm really trying to get here is this lovely shadow and light and I'm hoping to get quite a range of value with these 
liquid pencils so let's get into it wish me luck I really don't know too much about what I'm doing I'm going off kind of how I would use watercolors but I think these are going to behave a bit more differently so yeah let's see how we go shall we <laughs> here are all the materials I used I decided to use some nicer brushes rather than the cheapest ones I have and I am going in firstly with some of the permanent liquid graphites here and I did add a bit of water to each of them so that they wouldn't dry out onto the palette because I had a feeling that they might do that really quickly and it was a lot easier to use them as well when there was a bit of liquid in there so I'm going to let this go through and you can watch my process I'll probably mention when I come in with the re-wettable graphite painting a base layer with the permanent graphites here I am now going in with the rewettable ones I found that the permanent ones were pretty hard to blend by comparison so the rewettables are much easier and it was nicer to use them on top as you can see once it starts layering it does get rid of a lot of that streakiness which you tend to get with just the one layer so that was really good I did try to use all of the colors over the whole painting and really I think it would have been better if I'd only used maybe one or two colors but you know this was an experiment as well as an artwork so I was just trying to see what they would do for the figure here the rewettable ones were definitely so much easier to use when blending out on her face they looked a lot better I think than the permanent ones which kind of would leave a bit of a line if you weren't too careful and you really had to wet them out really really quickly otherwise then that was the end of it I painted the figure in the blue shade and then I tried to use some of the other colors for the background really the whole background was a bit of a nightmare but never mind I got what I got and you'll see that at the end of the video
originally wasn't going to use the yellow one because I didn't think I liked the colour, but then I picked it up and started going over everything and it's actually quite a lot greener than I was expecting. I was able to get quite a lot of texture just by using the liquid pencil straight from the tube but then I decided I didn't really like it and so I've smoothed everything over and because I used so many colors in the background it just looked a bit of an uncohesive mess so what I ended up doing was a green wash over everything and I think that came up a lot better just to kind of push the whole background out of it so that the figure is more in focus and then the following day I went over some of those darker areas again and you'll just see me touching up the rest of the picture here. And I went over right at the end with the permanent grey 3 because that was the darkest one of all of the colours I had. Almost a black. And here we have it. Not gonna lie, these were really hard to use. I struggled greatly with them. They just are so strange. They're one of the strangest things I've ever used. They don't behave like watercolor paints. I don't know, maybe more like gouache, but they just seem to have their own really sort of unique properties and it was quite a learning curve using them. I probably wouldn't recommend these as a beginner thing. I think if you want to start out with some tinted graphite that's water soluble I would go for the pencils first so if you went for the Derwent Graphi tints and I know there are quite a few other brands out there I think even Montmartre do a set of tinted graphites so I think I would recommend using those first but if you want to give yourself a challenge definitely give these ones a try as well um, which ones do I prefer over these two sets they do both have pros and cons to them. The pros for these is they are really good for going underneath a painting, so as you're underpainting, and they don't budge pretty much once they're down. The only trouble is that they do dry quite quickly and so as you saw I had them suspended in water because otherwise they were just going to dry completely on my palette and be a pain to get off. And they don't blend as well as these ones which are really good at blending but they lift like nobody's business and if you're trying to layer them it's not very good. <laughs> they're just going to come off so great for layering great for blending and if you use these on top of these ones they all work quite well together harmoniously. I thought out of all of them the grey 3 was the darkest in the permanent range. It was darker than the grey 3 in the rewettable range. I think my favourite is the blue in both of them. I think I really love that cool graphite color. I think that one is really good and surprisingly I didn't like the yellow to begin with but it actually came out quite well because I ended up using it as a kind of a green wash over everything. It's far more green than yellow by the way and so the red it does look warm compared to the blue but it doesn't look red like for example in this photo see how that's quite red it does not come up that red which was a bit disappointing for me I thought the red was a bit blur so if you just wanted to buy a couple of them I'd probably go the blue yellow and sepia maybe one of the greys as well but if you want the really dark grey go for the permanent grey three that one is nice and dark as you can see around the eyebrows and eyelashes <laughs> her eye looks a bit funny there but never mind I don't, I'm not talking about this hand either. I like this one and that background, yeah. I don't know what it is with me and backgrounds lately, but we aren't getting along very well. Anyway, it came out okay. I like that she's standing out. She's much brighter than the background, so that's a positive. And I guess you can't always win. <laughs> Another tip I have is that using them straight from the tube, they are really, really gluggy. And so what I did was I used a pipette 
with water and I dropped some water in and mixed it up so that it was more like a graphite wash rather than using it directly from the tube. I did occasionally use it directly from the tube but most of the time the wash was a lot easier to use especially for these permanent ones and I also did have a few leftovers in there and I couldn't bear to just throw them down the sink so I kept them and they are now in itty bitty tubes. These are the permanent ones because they'll dry and just not be usable. Look how blue that one's gone. They've really split so I guess I could shake them up and maybe put them on something. I don't know if I'll end up using these but I thought I'd keep them for a while and if I end up using these graphites at least they haven't gone to waste. That one's gone quite purple. I think this was the red one and you can see there is a little bit of a reddish tinge in there but the graphite itself just gets rid of that pretty much so yeah <laughs> just thought you might like to see what I did with the leftovers there obviously the rewettable ones you don't have to worry you can just let them dry in a pan and then put some water to them and they'll come back to life <laughs> anyway I hope you enjoyed this video I had fun doing it it was a real challenge but I'm so glad I finally got to use these I've been dying to use them for so long so if you enjoyed my video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel out and you can also put your comments down as to what you think about these liquid graphites and my artwork if you want. And please do subscribe to my channel for more videos I post twice a week. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're all having a fabulous day out there. I will see you all again really soon. Swatch so you later. Bye!